Cliff and Bridget, thank you so much for joining Global Business this evening. Now, before we get into the Lux Dev Academy, I want to ask you, Wycliffe, what motivated you to join the AI world back in 2023? Um, I felt like the world was changing and I previously had interest in programming. And when I was looking at my options, especially since I was coming from a statistics background, I noticed that the field very much aligns with what I love doing. So I took the step, I took a leap of faith. Uh, I was coming from the data field as a data analyst and I just decided to get into AI and understand how much effect it can have, yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the past five years, you've spent the better part of that year in the data and AI space industry and uh, you're now with LuxDev Academy. Walk us through what this uh, program that you offer at the Academy exactly means. So we, we do offer uh, the entire data ecosystem. We teach from data analytics, data science, data engineering, as well as artificial intelligence. Now, we have been doing this for, uh, since January, uh, officially as the premium classes. And we've focused a lot on the entire ecosystem. We don't focus on a specific niche, mm -hmm. um, just getting people to understand the entire data ecosystem, including artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a variety of uh, students who come from uh, here in Kenya and different parts of the, of, of the continent. Can you tell us more about yeah. that? Yeah, so um, uh, we, first of all, we are primarily based in Kenya. So of course, we are receiving so many Kenyan students. Um, but we have since expanded. We're receiving people from Nigeria, from um, DRC, from Uganda, as well as Tanzania. So we've been able to get into other markets, uh, talk of uh, East Africa as well as West Africa mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll be talking to more people especially uh, in South Africa and North Africa as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Bridget let me bring you in. Uh, Wycliffe has just mentioned a diverse group that you guys are now teaching at the Lux Dev Academy and uh, AI can be a very daunting technical space because it's forever changing. I want to find out from you in the past few years that you've been an AI trainer what are some of the strategies that you use uh, to teach AI concepts especially to non-technical students? First, we try to make AI approachable mm -hmm. and removing the fear around it uh, by giving real life examples like uh, how your phone suggests uh, a fastest route home, for example, when you're using Google Maps mm -hmm. or how Netflix can be able to suggest a good movie based on what you do across other sites mm -hmm. or how Spotify can make a good playlist for you depending on your activity. Yeah, so that's what we do. We make AI approachable, and then we break down learning into simple, approachable steps. The future of work is changing rapidly, and it's largely because of the AI revolution. It's taking over the world, isn't it? I want to know yeah, from you. With countries like the United States and China leading the pack, we have companies like OpenAI, Meta, we have China's DeepSeek. What are some of the, the policies and um, structures that we can harness as the African continent to plug some of our deficits in the AI, AI sector? So to begin with, um, of course, uh, these countries uh, have been very much ahead of us uh, with respect to AI because they have been doing it for the longest time. Yeah? So even for us getting to understand the relationship between data, whatever we are doing at a low surface level and transforming it into AI is what I believe we are trying now to catch up with. Um, a good thing about it is that I've seen a couple of companies, uh, African companies as well. Uh, for example, I can say something like Nkene AI. It's a Nigerian company and they have actually focused on getting their languages, uh, African languages like Yoruba, Swahili, and then using them so that we can advance AI, especially for the African continent. I am also very much aware that uh, some companies are investing heavily yeah, um, I think Google was investing around 37 million uh, USD, as well as Microsoft. They have a research lab also here in Nairobi, which I believe they want to advance artificial intelligence. So I'd say this is our year uh, in Africa to advance AI, and we do not want it to be only for ourselves. We want it to be for everyone. Mm -hmm. So AI for good, yeah. Fantastic. Bridget, I'm coming back to you. In your experience, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've seen the African continent face in the education sector and that you believe the AI uh, uh, movement can help uh, solve? Okay, um, I've noticed some challenges in Africa and one of the biggest challenges 
is uh, inequality in terms of access, mm -hmm. especially students who are from the rural areas. Yeah, so they're not able to access uh, good teachers, the correct infrastructure, and um, even up-to-date materials. Even in urban areas, they may be able to access the good teachers and all that, mm -hmm. but the size of, uh, of the classrooms, for example, or the size of students, how many the students are, it's not able to personalize the learning. So some students are left behind, mm -hmm. And um, most of the students are shy, so they're not, they won't come and tell you, um, I have forgotten something or yeah. I didn't catch something. Mm. So it's really hard for them to learn and they actually, they're actually left behind. Mm. And AI can come in handy, so imagine uh, an AI tool that can be able to learn how a, student's, a student understands things, how a student learns in their own pace or even an AI tool that can be able to understand different languages, for example. Mm -hmm. So that is how AI can help uh, solve, solve mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. okay? And then something else is uh, our education, our ed educational student doesn't align well with the current job market. So you find uh, a lot of graduates who are leaving university and they're not able to find jobs because okay. that's not what the employers are looking for. Mm -hmm. So they have to they have to go and look for something else. So they have to settle for something that they are they did not they did not learn or they have to upskill. Sure. Okay. So we can have an AI tool that can uh, look at the job market and be able to um, to recommend to schools and institutions what they need to change in their curriculum, what they need to integrate it with, so that uh, the graduates and the students can be job market whenever they get out there. I like that relevance. Yeah. There's certainly a big gap in our education sector, whether it's lower uh, education levels or higher institution levels. We are going to be hosting the um, upcoming Africa AI conference. It's happening in Mombasa here in Kenya. I know you're both excited to be attending this um, uh, conference and seeing what's going to come out of there. And it promises to address some of the problems that uh, Bridget has uh, uh, mentioned, a few of them, uh, Wycliffe. Wycliffe, let me come to you. What are some of the key factors when you're looking at the theme of this conference, it says shaping the future of ethical AI and data governance. Now, when you look at this theme, what are some of the key priorities that you think should be the main focus so that this theme becomes a reality for the African continent? Okay, so I believe that with um, ethical AI and data governance, first of all, is we need to come up with a very good strategy, uh, especially like the Kenyan um, national AI strategy that clearly outlines how we can come up with ethical AI. Um, the key challenges, uh, especially I think we've been seeing uh, in the past few months, um, there's been some sort of irresponsible use of AI, uh, especially depicting people in a very negative uh, picture mm -hmm. and also coming up with, uh, you know, nuanced ways of, of trying to intimidate people using artificial intelligence. Um, in this case, um, those structures in place that maybe that coming up from the AI strategy that is being created, I think they'll believe, uh, I, sorry, I believe that they will come up very handy, especially mm -hmm. in crafting the way that we move around ethical AI and data governance. Now, of course, with also companies, um, I know companies are very wary of uh, data, they are private data as well as people, um, it is very key that we uh, talk about how our data is handled. Because um, in very many cases, uh, data governance is a very big issue, especially with companies. We've seen it, um, uh, companies being hacked, getting their data. And so I believe that when we come uh, up with something like ethical AI and data governance, especially now in the summit that is going to be talked about, I believe it will lay out the foundations on how we can go around this and how we can come up with a very good strategy, mm -hmm. especially for um, AI uh, in general. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Wycliffe. Bridget, how about you? What are some of the key policies that you want to see come out of this AI conference? Okay, um, first of all, it's a good thing that Africa and Kenya is hosting this conversation. And as uh, Wycliffe has said, whenever we're defining this, we should be able to to implement AI with ethics and equity in mind. So whenever we're defining ethics, we should be able to define eth ethics from our own context, not the Western culture. 
So we have our own local economic, social, and um, unique dynamics, mm -hmm. right? So we should be able to define um, AI and ethics in our own dynamics. And we should also be able to invest in local talent. That is, we should do civic education mm -hmm. for, that is AI for good, right? Mm -hmm. As Wycliffe has said, we should be able to let people know what AI is, what it can be used for, mm -hmm. how, you'd, how useful it can be. Yeah, so we should be able to invest in local talent and um, ensure that everyone knows or everyone is informed about AI. And then we also need diverse voices at the table. Well, that brings us to the end of our conversation about the future of AI, the future of work in AI, and, so, and exactly what that means for the African continent. Bridget and Wycliffe, thank you so much for joining us on Global Business.